The UK throws away more food than any other European country. 10 million tonnes a year. That's enough to feed an estimated 145,000 people for life. What absolutely shocked me was, why is all this waste being allowed to happen? With millions of Brits struggling to put food on the table, it's a food crisis that makes no sense. But have these two men found the solution? Every town, every city, every community in the country can have an operation which brings surplus food and people in need together. Can they change the food habits of a nation? by focusing on the fresh food that supermarkets and wholesalers are throwing away. Seven years ago, David Cairns and Robin Aitken set up a radical scheme in Oxford to minimise the scandal of food waste in the UK. So we came up with this idea that we would go to supermarkets and wholesalers, take their surplus food, which would otherwise go to waste, and redistribute it to charities that actually feed people. It's a strategy that's borne extraordinary fruit. We have 60 charities that we deliver to routinely. Currently we're delivering somewhere between one and a half and two million pounds worth of food a year. They're now replicating the project in London, a city 55 times the size, where charities are crying out for their services. There's 52 families in this hostel. No, it's quite a big one, so this is just a token of the amount of food they probably need. But getting the food to the desperate rather than the bin requires an army of volunteers. The team's challenge now is to get boots on the ground. At the moment we need at least six volunteers a day to sort of function properly. And yesterday I think I had three. <laughs> We follow David and Robin as they try and establish a unique food rescue charity in our capital city. It is a huge challenge, but it's also very exciting because it's the first time we've ever actually been able to prove that we can replicate this thing. They have to get vans. We've just got to decide what spectacular discount you're going to give us now. Volunteers. You're going to be picking up from Costco in Wembley. Charities. Tonight is a pop-up restaurant hosted by the Real Junk Food Project Manchester and suppliers. There's a few carrot cakes in there. Few, just great. a few. <laughs> and expand across London. They may have succeeded in Oxford, but cracking London is a huge challenge. It's 10am at the Felix Project's new depot in West London. Project coordinators Anne and Sophie are spearheading the efforts to make it all work smoothly. Here we are for another day. And demand for their services is already snowballing. There are 62 charities so far really? who want to receive supplies. That's amazing. Yeah. So actually, there's at least 62 more charities out there in London that deal with food that would love to have a delivery from us. Yes. Anne and Sophie's task is to pick up the food that the London supermarkets throw out and deliver it to the people who need it most. We go to supermarkets, right? and we actually take the surplus food that, that would otherwise go into landfill. We bring it back here, we store it overnight, and we deliver it to charities the next day so that they can cook meals with it. But Anne is struggling to find enough volunteers to make all the deliveries. So we've had a couple of people not been able to come in so far, but they've just kind of not turned up. But I've had a driver cancel. I don't suppose you would be happy to drive, would you? Unless they get more volunteers, the project's monumental mission of getting rescued food to those who need it will not succeed. Today, Deputy Coordinator Sophie has no choice but to take the fresh food out herself. So this is an extra delivery to one of our regular charities today because they're having a party at the weekend um, for the 150th anniversary of their church, I believe. Um, so I'm doing this this afternoon because we're a bit short staff. See you later. Anne and Sophie are the only full-time staff, and with even more supermarkets wanting to help and even more charities needing fresh food, they're desperate for volunteers. At the moment, we need at least six volunteers a day to sort of function properly. And yesterday, I think I had three, so it was a bit of a stretch. Supermarkets are legally bound to throw away food that's past its sell-by date, even if this food is still perfectly good to eat. This is the food the project targets. For the charity, there's a, there's a window of opportunity between the sell-by date 
and the use-by date. You know, you've got a few days when the food is still perfectly wholesome, it's perfectly healthy, and that's the little window of opportunity that we have to exploit. I can never get my head around when we go and pick up from suppliers just the quantities of food that they're, you know, legally they have to throw away. And it's, you know, it's still absolutely fine. Um, it's, it's mad, really. Um, but that's why we're here. One of the first charities needing fresh food that the project has signed up is St. Lawrence's Larder. They provide a cooked meal for homeless people, although struggling to make ends meet. We run an open kitchen. It means someone can come here and receive a three-course meal. Before I retired, I used to run a very uh, exclusive Western restaurant. I ran La Scarga restaurant for 10 years, so it's fine dining here, and we treat everyone as if they are one of the customers. Most of the food the charity uses is rescued food provided by the project. So instead of heading for the bin, it's lovingly prepared for the homeless by a 10-strong team of very dedicated volunteers. I started coming in thinking I'd do like four hours. And I'm doing like um, Monday bread pickup, I'm doing Wednesday bread pickup, I'm here on Tuesday and Thursday serving food and doing the overnight bags and I'm on Wednesday here cooking as well. So I'm um, like become a fixture. Celery in there, leaf, carrots. I had a minor stroke. Uh, so I was off work for a long time and like I started being indoors and depression took over. I was feeling very self-conscious about myself because my face had dropped and, you know, I was going to a shop and people look at me like this is the elephant man. Someone come. So I said, to hell with it, like, you know, I have to get out and do something. In the past 12 months, the kitchen has served 4,468 meals and provided an equivalent number of takeaway bags for the homeless. They come here for a takeaway meal, meal which is a fresh vegetarian uh, soup. The vegetables are usually provided by the Felix project. Then we have a pasta cheese bake and then a surprise uh, pudding because we never know what we're going to be given. We've had occasions where we, we, we've been like stuck and we are wondering what on earth are we going to give out in bags. We've just got like four or five basic items. But this place, there's something so magical about it. Every time we get to that, that place there, we get a donation in. This is what we've got today. I've deliberately put in lots of cakes. I can't say enough. This is going to be wonderful. Now, sadly, I'm not going to be able to carry anything. Just get the garden. The gardeners are going to help me, are they? Yes. Oh, lovely. All right. All of this to go? All of it's going in, yeah. I'm not sure what this means. It's E. It's like um, Easter cake Sunday. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Without David and Robin's revolutionary new project, charities like St. Lawrence's would not be able to function. What St. Lawrence's larder illustrates is the value of good-hearted people for doing something so simple at a local level. You know, there is nothing simpler than saying, we will feed people, but they have to find the money to buy the food. And we say, no, you don't have to buy the food. We'll give you the food. You know, for them, that's a real morale booster. Also, it's better food that we provide than they can afford to buy. Really, we couldn't do the work we now do without the Phoenix Trust. It really has helped us to budget well. We know that we don't have to scramble around looking for money to pay for fresh vegetables for the soup, which is really great. Yeah, Felix do us proud. I mean, we've got a nice load of vegetables there. In the UK, an estimated 10 million tonnes of food is wasted every year. That amounts to £17 billion annually. But to get that food to people who need it requires a huge amount of work and volunteers. Gretchen is one of the London Project's first volunteers. She signed up after being shocked by the sheer quantity of food she saw heading for the rubbish bin. The amount of food that would be wasted is just phenomenal and it just... It breaks your heart when you see the amount of food that's thrown away. You see the homeless and you see people who don't have as much as you might have and it just feels like it, it's something that should have to be done with. Today her first port of call is Fresh Horizons, another new charity using the fresh food from the London Project. 
Gretchen's off to Fresh Horizons. They are a charity that deliver food to various different hostels in the northwest London area. The hostels are a little bit outside our catchment area, so we agreed that we could deliver the food to her house. She puts it straight in her car. She goes straight off from there to deliver the food to all the different hostels that she supplies to. Rose opened her first house for the homeless in Harrow Weald in northwest London last year, and she now delivers to them the fresh food that the London Project delivers to her. We've got quite a lot to do. Take this one. We heard about the Felix Project through the Salvation Army in North West 10 because we run a drop-in together with them uh, once a week. I'm really impressed by the, how they're organised and focused and they know who they're aiming to help. So people in poverty tend to end up eating a very basic diet. And over a period of time, that can have a very bad effect on health. So one of the good things about a project like this is that you get good quality fresh food to people, food which they probably couldn't afford to buy. So in a small way, you are improving the health and diet of people. Like St. Lawrence's larder, Rose relies on the donations she receives from the London Project. Once the food arrives, she sets off to deliver it in her own car. Fantastic work. By the way. <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. See you. Yeah, bye bye. bye. She managed to fit a huge amount into the car. There's onions and the cake on her front seat. There was pastries behind the seats. There was um, fruit juices down the bottom. There was not a space left on her in her car. It's a very low. <laughs> the car's nearly scraping the ground on. All that food that we gave this morning was all destined for the tip and for the bin. It was all going to be binned. It's perfectly edible and it's perfectly fine, but because of supermarkets and everybody else's team, they can't sell it, it would get thrown away. But not today. Rose's first stop is the hostel her charity set up a year ago, which is now home to five men. When Rose turns up, two of the residents help to take the food they need from the back of the car. Have we got carrots and stuff? Oh, we'll cook, yeah. cook them. Justin only moved in yesterday, so I don't know what he needs yet. <laughs> food poverty can lead to severe malnutrition. Last year, a shocking 16,000 cases of malnutrition were reported in England's hospitals, and a lack of fresh fruit and veg in people's diets is leading to a return of Victorian diseases like rickets and scurvy. Milk is good, that's a good idea. I'll be expecting to see some fantastic cooking this week, guys. By specifically targeting fresh, perishable produce, the London Project is doing its bit to combat this alarming trend. Picking up fruit and veg and whatever else, it's a no-brainer, right? The fact that it provides a health benefit to the ultimate recipient is classic. It's nice to, uh, you know, have people that do this sort of thing, yeah, it's great. So this obviously helps, um, so save on, and on, on the budget as well. So, like for example, like the stuff we got here, we don't have to get and just use that money for the transport and other things. With her first two customers fed and watered, Rose is now off to stop number two, an ex-neighbour of hers who's fallen on hard times. A family of, of five, uh, three boys, mum and dad, um, and they're they're in temporary accommodation until they get rehoused. What about fruit? Right. Uh, so just put you some of these in here. Raspberries? Yeah. Grapes? Yep. Yeah. This is great for us because we're in temporary accommodation at the moment. We don't know how long we're going to stay there for. And it's a good stepping stone to getting good food to come in. It's good for families and for their kids as well. I'm always amazed when I fill this car up to think that all of this would just be put in a landfill. With um, projects like the Felix Project, it literally gets to the people that need it. Rose's last stop of the day is a hostel for the homeless in Harlesden. So you can take um, all these. It's a bit heavy. Yeah. Right. There's 52 families in this hostel. I bet it's quite a big one, so this is just a token of the amount of food they probably need, you know? But they never say no. <laughs> That's it then. Volunteers like Rose provide an invaluable service. There are now 8.4 million people in the UK who are said to be too poor to eat, whilst at the same time around £17 billion worth of food is going to waste every year.
It's a situation that David and Robin, who inspired the Big Food Rescue, find totally unacceptable. I think it's actually criminal that we've allowed this to go on for so long, because this has been going on for decades. And when you actually look at the waste in one, one place and then you multiply that by the number of places across the UK, and then you see the videos of you know all this waste being put into landfill, you realise how insane it is. Between them, David and Robin have come up with a solution that's as simple as it is ingenious. We saw all this waste and we thought, what can we do with this? And we were aware then of these charities that provide meals for people, so it was logical just to put them together. Their model has already been running successfully in Oxford for seven years, where an army of 120 volunteers deliver food to 60 charities. The indomitable Mar Smith is an example of their idea in action. How many carrots are here? Uh, this is all we got. And the peppers, yeah. yeah. No peppers, but we got parsnips. When we first started this and we started to look for charities to help, we came across this charity called the Community Soup Kitchen in Oxford. And I met this lady called Ma Smith and she became an absolute inspiration to me. Ma has been providing hot home-cooked lunches for the homeless and needy in Oxford for a quarter of a century. Max here, just drain it and leave a little bit of water in it to keep just it hot. Just a little, little bit of water. Yeah, but to keep it hot. Everybody sit down now, we're going to sit, do the soup. OK. 26 years ago, I was at work and see this guy heating from the bin, and that's how it started. You can't just turn a blind eye and see people suffering and you don't do anything. You've got to do something if you have a heart. She feeds up to 80 people a week and relies on the food from David and Robin's original model in Oxford. When we came along, she viewed us like a godsend. At that stage, she was only doing the meals one day a week. As soon as she got this, she decided she was going to do it two days a week. And you know, when you see that from a, a woman like that, you know, it gives you the drive to carry on with what you're doing. Like all charities, Ma relies on volunteers, which is why she's co-opted her kids. Three of her sons and eight of her grandchildren all work in the kitchen, providing two hot meals a week on a Wednesday and a Saturday. Just because someone's homeless doesn't mean that they're not, they're not supposed to eat good. If you're homeless or you're struggling, you still deserve to have a good meal inside you, um, regardless of what, what your situation is. And that's what we provide, is provided with a good meal, good company, and just a good, good atmosphere. My role is do as I told, I'm told. <laughs> the team cooks a different menu every week, using food rescued from going to landfill. Oh, you're a provider. You are our provider, Jesus. We get um, salad, potatoes, carrots, asparagus, and mushrooms. That's the bed from the, from the food bag. Without the Oxford Food Bank, we couldn't afford to buy fresh vegetable, fruits. We couldn't afford to do it. And I really thank God for the food bank because it really helped. Ma runs a tight ship. Our plate can't take any more. That's enough. But she's much loved and has a team of grateful customers. It's, it's proper amazing. There's just so much food today. Southern fried chicken, um, sauteed mushrooms, cabbage and asparagus, carrots, parsnips, roast potatoes. Mars outdone herself yet again. <laughs> Mars Smith's lunches are always absolutely delicious, cooked with love, care and attention. And everybody loves them. Have you got any pork or anything? Fried fry chicken. Fried chicken. Can I have one of them as well, then? Yeah. Sister's been doing it for 25 years, yeah. and she deserves the gold star for keeping us all fed. I'm starving. Thank you, darling. The best food that I would prepare for my family, I prepared for them just the same. Fresh food, freshly cooked, that's what we do. Uh, I brought her some nice flowers for me and my two girls and my son. Just to say thank you very much for all the things you do for the urban people down here in East Oxford. Thank you very much. Food banks are the lifeblood of charities like Mars Smith's, but they need volunteers to deliver supplies. 
When the Oxford model started in 2009, it had just two volunteers. Seven years later, they have over 50 times that number. Volunteers are the lifeblood of any charity, really. But for this charity, they're absolutely essential because the key to what we're trying to do is we're trying to make money that people donate to us go further. And if we can do that by virtue of the fact that the volunteers, the majority of the work is done by volunteers, it becomes a hugely more cost-effective thing. David and Robin's challenge now is to repeat the success of the Oxford project back in London. And in order to do this, they need volunteers. Every time the van goes out, there's space for a driver, obviously, and then there's two spots for delivery and collection assistance. So in an ideal world, all of those spots would be taken every time the van goes out. So they've come up with a plan to get their message out there. They've persuaded the Evening Standard newspaper to publicise their plight. The response has been overwhelming. Good afternoon, the Felix Project. Yeah, if you can send me a text message, that'd be great. Best thing to do, for, for, I take your details and um, we'll get in touch with you. That might, might be the sort of best way. How many responses have you had from the campaign? Um, all in all, 600 volunteers. Wow. With the calls flooding in, the team can now begin building a database. So have you put that in the spreadsheet? No. Get them into the spreadsheet, because then literally all you have to do is just copy and paste the email addresses, so then you won't be sending an individual email, yeah. you just do it as a group email, it'll be much quicker. As a result of the campaign, we've got loads of volunteers, more volunteers than we've ever had before. We've got people that want to drive the van, we've got people that want to be out in the van doing election and deliveries. We've got people that don't mind being here and doing, you know, the stock rotation and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. But names on a spreadsheet doesn't necessarily mean more boots on the ground. The big test now will be whether the volunteers actually turn up. It's estimated that shops and manufacturers generate around 6 million tonnes of food waste annually, but another 3 million comes from restaurants. The food surplus that we get is the same impact as food waste from restaurants, but I think how you tackle those are entirely different animals. The process that we use is a very manual process, a very basic process. With the development of technology, apps, you name it, we must be able to harness that technology to actually try to eliminate food waste from retail outlets, like restaurants. Two Leeds and London-based entrepreneurs, Chris Wilson and Jamie Crummy, have tried to do exactly this. In an effort to reduce food waste in restaurants, they've developed a new programme or app which can be accessed on mobile phones. As soon as this goes through, a notification will come up on your phone saying that Chris has made an order. Too Good To Go is an anti-food waste app which allows people to collect food that would otherwise be thrown away from restaurants, cafes and bakeries just before they close, pick it up a reduced price, enjoy a great meal and get to di divert food from being sent to landfill. This here is the landing screen that a customer gets when they log into the Too Good To Go app. So if we click onto Jimmy Spices, they've got more than five, five portions left so we can just click by here and all we need to do is collect between quarter to ten and quarter past ten. The app has already been rolled out in Brighton, Leeds and London and today the boys are visiting food outlets in Birmingham in a bid to convince them to come on board. Hi Dave, it's Jamie. You all right? Nice to meet you. Hi Dave, Chris. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi there. So how we work with restaurants or bakeries as well I should say, it's about placing the value back onto food as something that should be eaten and not thrown away. And we created the app as a platform which allows like restaurants and cafes and bakeries to make their surplus food available for collection. So rather than bidding it, it's made available through the app. 600,000 tonnes of food is wasted every year in UK restaurants. And when this food rots in landfill, it releases dangerous pollutants. If we ate all the edible food waste that we threw away, it would have the same effect to the environment as taking one in four cars off the road. This app allows restaurants to reduce their impact on the environment and by selling the surplus food at a greatly reduced price, also make a small profit. So as you can see, we've got, what, 10 boxes of salad, two sandwiches, more salads, okay. and then we've got a few cakes and some loads of bread wow. for £3.50 for a salad yeah. box and a loaf of bread and a cake or a sandwich. Yeah, you, you, can't, go you, can't, you, you can't go wrong with it, can you? No, yeah. that sounds brilliant. 
another restaurant in Birmingham, Jimmy Spices, has been using the app for the past two months and has regular customers picking up cheap and tasty food that would otherwise have been thrown away. Oh, I've got this app, too good to go. Good Thank you, so do I just head through? Yeah, please, Buffet restaurants like this one waste on average 28 and a half kilos of food per day. That could feed up to 100 people. It is a great idea. Chef works very hard to make uh, fresh cooked food over here. And it's a shame if it goes in the bin. Hey, How are you doing? Have you seen a reduction in the amount of food that you're throwing away every day? In one box, it's about 500 grams. It's an average of three boxes a day. So it's 1.5 kilograms of wastage food. Which is, get, which is going in somebody's boxes. And we're making money out of it, so can't go wrong with it. That's exactly what we love yeah. to say, is that we're, we're feeding bellies instead of bins, yeah, yeah. which is, uh, is I think, it, quite, quite it's, a nice little It's a great rate. idea. I mm. wonder you should have got this before. <laughs> <laughs> Currently in the UK, we waste 25% of the food we produce. At the same time, 4.7 million people say they're so poor they can go a full day without eating. This is why volunteers dedicated to getting the waste food to the hungry are so important. At St. Lawrence's Larder in North London, they see firsthand what a difference the fresh food from the London project makes. From the end of January of this year, we, we opened the door and instead of just seeing a few men, we were packed with 70 people needing to be fed. So that brought about us opening a third day and that's the day that the Felix project comes and that's where we select the food that we'd like to use and we, we start cooking straight away. Stephen and his team of volunteers use the rescued food from the London project to make meals for the homeless and the needy. Today they're also preparing for the church's 150th birthday celebrations. Just polishing the dust away for our big day. <laughs> Got many um, water jugs. That goes on the silver tray. Yes, so, yeah. thank you. The party will be attended by a whole host of local dignitaries and is an opportunity for Stephen to showcase the work they're doing. Deputy Lieutenant of London will be joining us. The Mayor will be joining the Mayor of Brent, the leader of the council, Mo Butt, and the Bishop of Wilsdon. And we're cooking exactly as the same meal we feed the guests here. I've not met the Bishop, so yes, I am. I am looking forward to that. The last count was 100 people. Absolutely, yes. With every delivery from the food bank, the volunteers at St Lawrence's never know quite what they're going to get. But once the food arrives, it's over to them to get inventive with it. Pineapple and yes. cheese. Pineapple and cheese. Six. Yes. Apple and cheese and yes. pineapple and cheese. Yes. Very yes. Yeah, there we go. Yes. There we go. Oh, I love we it. can do it. Let's do it. Well. Lovely. Jen also has some ideas for the 150th anniversary cake. Yes, I think if I do a a stencil on there and do it with chocolate, chocolate uh, hundreds and thousands. But I cook like I am for my family. So I think that secret ingredient goes in their love. So when you cook, I mean, you can follow a recipe, but when you put a little bit of yourself in there, I think it comes through when they taste it. I hope it does at least, like, I, I try my best. With just a few hours to go before the guests arrive, Jen commandeers fellow volunteer Robert to prepare the stencil for the birthday cake. Do I have a ruler or anything like that? Oh, you need a ruler. And in the meantime, Douglas sets about preparing the meal's staple, the same pasta dish they served during the week to the homeless. I'm with one veggie and three tuna and sweet corn. Will no, that do you? you? <coughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, what you, you could do with a blunt knife and a carving you board. You are brilliant. <laughs> All that remains now is to add the hundreds and thousands. But things don't quite go according to plan. Don't go, don't go on the cake, don't go on the cake, don't go on the cake. Oh, I see, they're granules, they're not, it's not cocoa powder. No. Luckily, with just an hour to go before the guests arrive, Jen manages to salvage things. I think it's fabulous, yes, good, well done. Good. Well done. We use what we have for the end result. Know, uh, we, we use what and we have this for... Is, this is from the Felix Project as well, isn't it? Yes. We never thought when we cooked chocolate 1000s so that we'd be using We'd be them using for them this. for this, no. yes. When Felix Project arrived, they know that we're going to take everything off the van. <laughs> yeah. And then we turn to somebody's... We, we, yeah. we, we, we yeah. use it. We use it. We, we use it. Do. Yeah. 
The London project is steadily growing and now gives fresh food to 22 local charities that all cater for the homeless and those on the poverty line. But when they get more volunteers on board, they hope to follow the Oxford model and expand out. Oh, a lot of the charities we serve aren't to do with food poverty. Food is an important part of their day, but it's not what they're really about. So actually giving them food is you know, a great thing to do because it takes money off their budget. In Oxford, one group the rescued fresh food helps is Farmability, a charity that teaches farming skills to adults with learning disabilities and autism. You can take the whole of this if you want to put it all in. Are you sure? Yeah. While their members are not necessarily living in food poverty, they're still considered deserving of the food bank's help. We, as the Oxford Food Bank, have been able to deliver food to them because they provide a lunch for, the, for, the, for their clients. As a charity, we struggle for money uh, and spending any extra money on just feeding people when we're, we're teaching them doing all the other things is, is something that's impossible for us. But, I mean, the food bank allows us to supply some healthy food for people at the farm and, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. Farmability is the brainchild of Diane Horseman. I'm a former classroom teacher of special needs students. And to make a long story short, we put together a little pilot project for adults with learning disabilities to come and spend the day on the farm doing farm jobs. And it was very successful. Would you like to hold a chicken, Sam? I'll hold her if you want. 20-year-old Tom has been part of the Oxfordshire project for the past three months. Along with his co-farmers, he works in the vegetable garden, takes care of livestock and collects, grades and packs eggs laid by the farm's chickens. So basically you just have to stand here and collect all the eggs. Then either they're dirty or cracked or weird. You just put them on the bad tray. Well, Tom has autism and I believe in this country it's 80% of people with autism have no job to go to. I'm going to run a small holding. Small holdings are a sort of family farm, but you do it small scale. He wants his own small holding, which I hope he can have someday. Yeah, no one should underestimate us because we can do everything everyone else can do. And part of the reason why I want the small holding is to show what autistic people can do. I'll be setting an example for more people like me. We're not stupid and we're not dumb. We're just like everybody else. Farmability provides a hot lunch each day for its farmers, made partly with vegetables from its own garden and partly with surplus food rescued by the Oxford model. So the courgettes are from our garden. Where's the lettuce from? Garden. The garden. Where's the rice from? We go to the food bank. food bank. You're right. Well done, Philip. A lot of our co-farmers and interns, they don't have the best eating habits. So they show up with their pack lunch, which could be 12 packets of crisps, and that's lunch. The food bank gives us cheese, dairy products that we don't normally have the money for. So the food banks made a big difference. But as well as benefiting from the food bank's donations, this charity is also doing its own bit to combat food waste. Do you want to do this one, huh? So that's the food bank we're going to put to make one there. We had excess eggs from our egg uh, business. So we called up the food bank and we've donated thousands of eggs to them. So now we've got a two-way relationship going, which has been wonderful for us. David? Ah, oh, yeah. oh, hi, Anna. We've got a few eggs for you oh, from Farmability. We haven't got a huge amount today, but we're going to uh, drop off what we've got in the back. Okay, so, well, let's uh, see what we've got. Yeah, cool. There you go, I'll let you do the honours. So, your last egg order of the day. Over the last couple of years, we've probably had thousands and thousands, maybe 20,000, 30,000 eggs from them. It's very nice to have a link up with them because they're a charity that do an awful lot themselves. And they supply us with food, we supply them with food, so it's, it's nice to be able to do that crossover. Delivering food waste to the people who need it most is a simple strategy with immediate results. There's always going to be waste in the food chain. Yeah. And certainly doing what we do and making use of it rather than just letting it rot, surely that's just common sense. David and Robin believe the model they've rolled out in Oxford and now London could easily be applied to the rest of the country. Their ambition is to make it a recognised new part of the food supply chain. There's no reason why the final ambition shouldn't be to have 
food operations like this right across the country. Every town, every city, every community in the country can have an operation which brings surplus food and people in need together. And it seems that the project's influence has already started to spread. Hiya, here for the food surplus, please. In Stroud, Mum Debbie Young has become her very own one-woman waste food rescue project. Oh my goodness, that looks fabulous. I come here every morning to collect food surplus and take it up to school to start doing some cooking with the children. Thanks, ladies. See you tomorrow. Debbie has recently taken over the cooking at her daughter's school after becoming concerned at the quality of the food being served. And seeing the amount of waste her local supermarket was generating, she realised she could find a use for it. This would normally be thrown away, not because it's necessarily out of date, but occasionally because such as these blueberries, the packet's broken, labels come off these mushrooms. And as you can see, all this food is perfectly good food and great for the, to make some food for the children. Debbie collects the surplus food every morning and uses it to make lunch for up to 50 children. Hiya. Hello. I've got loads of stuff in the car. Come and give me a hand yeah. if that's all right. Yeah. My daughter came to this school five years ago and saw the type of food that the children were being given, saw the amount of food waste, and there was a desire to improve the type of food that children were eating in terms of quality and the variety that they could have. We've got some oranges we could put on, or we could do some more peppers. Olives. Put some olives on there. Yeah. And then maybe do some... Well, let's stick some banana on there and some satsumas. Debbie buys the meat for the lunches from a local butcher, but all the fruit, veg and bread is waste from the supermarket, which would otherwise have been thrown away. There is a massive amount of food surplus around. There is, you know, what you saw is received today, we can feed the children on for a whole day, two days. I would much rather people be able to use the food like we're using it today and actually feed people because there is nothing wrong with it at all. Two minutes time, they will start to come in. On the menu today is a choice of chicken korma with biryani rice, jacket potatoes with cheese or tuna sandwiches, most of which is made with ingredients which would otherwise have been headed for landfill. Because we're a relatively small school, um, if we didn't get the free fruit and veg and bread, we would probably just about scrape by. Uh, but it means that we can buy far better quality meat for the children that they normally get. And it means we can get the more unusual stuff, things that they would never normally have. It's a strategy that's gone down a storm with the children. I like it because it's healthy and it's homemade. I'm so much happier because I don't normally have packed lunch anymore because I used to go on to pack lunch at the end when before it changed because it was I didn't like it, but now it's really nice. I feel like I'm healthy and fit to do stuff. Yeah, it's really nice. The effort that Debbie and the rest of the people have put in to sourcing the food and getting it here so that every day the children have such a nutritious cooked meal and yeah otherwise we get chucked in the bin and wasted. I think it's important that we don't call it food waste because as you saw today the food isn't waste food it can be for lots of reasons so we prefer to call it food surplus. With 10 million tonnes of food surplus in the UK that could be used to feed the hungry, it's not surprising that the London Project now has a queue of charities wanting to use the fresh food it rescues. But to get the food to the charities, they need volunteers. The basic ingredients are suppliers, charities and volunteers. And if we can find those in any area of London, then we can make this work. Following their decision to team up with the Evening Standard, the charity was inundated with calls from people wanting to volunteer. But signing up is one thing, turning up is quite another. Usually it's just a case of waiting until we've got a volunteer to do that route and then scrabbling around for a couple of delivery and collection assistants. But on this occasion, Anne needn't have worried. Hello. Hi there, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you, Nick. I'm Anne. So 9.15? Yeah. Tidy. Yeah. OK. Is that OK? Thank you. Thank you. So I've got you in for Monday at 12.45 and then Friday at 12. Thank you. As a result of the campaign, we've got loads of volunteers, more volunteers than we've ever had before. It's, it seems like a total luxury to have more volunteers than we need, actually. So, yeah, we're absolutely at a full rotor this week. All that remains now is to put them to work. Do you want to have a little practice in the van before you head off? Um... With or without me? I, to be honest, we're probably going to be OK. 
Nick Clifton contacted the charity after reading about it in the Evening Standard. I know that the charities that it's actually working for are, are, are crying out for, for, for the produce that is being delivered um, and it just isn't getting through at the moment. Um, and what we're doing here is making sure that it's getting through. Larry Platinum joined up as a way of giving something back to the community. Salad, fruit, lots of bread, carrots, cakes. They're taking food that normally would be wasted and uh, recycling it and giving it to people really in need. So to me, it's just, it just ticks my boxes. I have learned something watching you building, yeah? <laughs> you have. And it's very organised. Yeah, I do like to have a system. I do, yeah. I, I do I, like I, to I have a system. I would go out with a van load of crisps. <laughs> crisps and cider. <laughs> Gary Lonergan is another new volunteer who feels passionate about reducing food waste. We're helping food not to go into landfill, but to go to the people who need it. So it's a very wor worthwhile remit, and I'm glad to be part of it. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17th new volunteer this week. That's crazy. With the delivery vans and the warehouse full of volunteers, Anne and her team can now begin to expand their operation, picking up more food and delivering to more charities. I'm so proud and grateful and appreciative and it's amazing the amount of time people give up to come and help us, yeah. I'm totally proud of them. St Lawrence's Larder in North London uses the fresh food from the London Project to make meals for 120 people every week. And today they're also celebrating the church's 150th birthday. This is going to be for the florists, for the uh, floral arrangements. Stephen gives his team a last minute briefing. And the guests will come round the church and into the church hall. So when they arrive, standing there with trays of soft drinks, champagne, and um, cordial for the children. The team now has exactly one hour to get everything ready. Watch yourself, don't fall over. It's very good to be here. We're celebrating today uh, 150 years of a church on this site, and you probably can't imagine what it was like 150 years ago. Today, the VIPs will be served exactly the same food that's dished up to the guests at St. Lawrence's Larder. I think people think that a, a soup kitchen is going to be sort of paper plates and mashed potato. We're not. It's china, it's a napkin, it's fresh linen, it's everything that um, you'd expect from fine dining. St Lawrence's Larder serves up to 200 meals a week using good fresh food that would otherwise have gone straight to landfill and today has been a celebration of the volunteers work. When I went into the hall and the people are just thanking me and I'm sort of thinking well I knew people would go away happy but it was just way beyond beyond any of my expectations. It's all been terrific and, uh, and all the hard work that's gone into it is all worthwhile because everybody's enjoyed it. It's been great, absolutely fabulous. Bring on the next one. <laughs> we try to give our clients at St Lawrence's Larder good food to, to nourish them and to encourage them with fellowship and um, love. It's all unconditional. We ask no questions and today that was really celebrated. Next time. There's not enough storage. As the amount of food waste keeps on growing. It's just yeah. not manageable for us to have this much. The London project continues to expand. We seem to be bulking up on the supply, but we just really need to hone in on expanding out charity-wise, and so we've got more places to, to send this food out, really. I'm uh, Robin from the Felix Project. Yeah, I, I do. do. And conquering the waste food crisis calls for some creative solutions. It's a craft ale brewed with surplus bread. Stick around for Homes Under the Hammer in Surrey, Derbyshire and Gwent next on BBC One. Then the morning's medical drama, 75-year-old Shirley needs a stent to prevent a heart attack. Her story on the secret life of the hospital bed in an hour.